see the way that they love you and express their love to you. It's so beautiful. And, uh, and, and I pray, God, your protection upon those people. I pray, God, that you protect those dear, loving children of yours. Amen. Lord, I, I can't say that I come to you understanding all that's going on right now. Unfortunately, Lord, we live in a world where we have prophets that are speaking from every angle and declaring things. Every time an event arises, there seems to be a prophet that rises up and says that you've so told them about it. We come to the place, Lord, where I don't even know if they're truly prophesying from you or they're just coming out of their flesh. It doesn't really matter because what I'm asking, Lord God, is for your will to be done in Ukraine. Yes. Amen. Men can say what we want as long as we want, any time we want. But that changes nothing. But what you desire to do in that country is what we want to see happen. I know, Lord God, that life is precious to you. But life also is not something like what we understand as living a few years on this earth. Life is eternal. And that life is precious to you. But I pray, Lord God, that every person that is there in that country, every man, every woman, every child, that you have created, that they have potential within them, they have a, an assignment in the kingdom, that that assignment will not, will not be um, shortened by the disastrous effects of war. Lord, I, I, I see the word pride here. Pride cometh before destruction. And, and, I, and I see Putin full of pride. Amen. And his pride is causing destruction. But I'm also reminded that a Holy Spirit comes before fall. And so therefore his pride may be causing destruction, but his haughty spirit is going to bring him down. Amen. Amen. And I thank you, Lord God, that you are doing that right now, even as we speak. That that platform which he has created for himself is about to crumble and fall. I thank you for that, Lord. Protect your children. Lord, let this be a David and Goliath story. That Ukraine stands, so oh God. We've seen the reports of the men and women standing in prayer and praise and, and adoration to you in the midst of all of this, Lord. And let this be, Lord, a, a David and Goliath story. That, Lord, that Goliath falls. Amen. Yes. Amen. Because he has not a covenant with the Holy God of heaven. That's right. Amen. But Amen. the men and women who have accepted Jesus as their Savior in Ukraine have a covenant with you. So we declare to them, with them this day that the giant shall fall. Yes. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And the world shall see this and they shall say there is a God in heaven. Amen. I will give you praise for this right now in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen and amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, we we get into the Word. Amen. Amen. Get a little bit into the Word this morning. Hallelujah. Let's pray again. Lord, we come to you right now into this, this, this holy gathering, 
holy because we come into the presence of the holy king. And we, we come into the royal presence of the king of all creation. And we lay aside everything that would hinder us. We lay it all aside and we say, Lord God Almighty, King of Heaven, we desire nothing more and nothing less than your presence and your instruction. Lord, I'm just a vessel. Just a vessel. Just a pipe that it flows through. So Holy Spirit, bring the word yes. of heaven today from the throne room of heaven that it may come forth, O oh God, and quench our thirsty soul. Lord, that we may know you, the one true God, and we may know the reality of your kingdom and your kingship. So that, Lord, that our lives will be transformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ. When we give glory and honor to you today, let those things which need to be said be said, let it be said in love and in purity and in, in honesty and sincerity, and let those things which need not be said to just not to be said. And we give praise to you this day in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. <laughs> well, this is a Holy, Holy Spirit moment, is all I can tell you. I want you to turn with me to Luke chapter 7. And uh, how many of you want to hear from God? Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. yes. How many of you know God wants to hear, wants to, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 10. Uh, how many of you know that God wants you to hear it from Him? Yes, I'm Amen. Sure. Amen. Now, God came in the flesh. Amen. Jesus Christ, the manifestation of God in the flesh. Amen. Right. He came to restore everything that was lost. He came to give back that which was taken from you. From us. I'm, I'm hoping that the Spirit of the Lord will allow me this morning to share with you what He's put in my heart over the past few days. It, and and, it, and if, if you get a hold of it, and, and if I can get a hold of it and not lose it, it'll change your life forever. Amen. Amen. It'll make such a difference that you will, you will never see life the same again. Mm -hmm. you, will, you will never face the problems in your life the same way you always did. Mm -hmm. This is a, a fresh meal for me, for me, for me, from, from heaven. Right, right. And, and, I, and I love it when God does that. And you know we've been preaching a long time about kingdom. Yes, yes. Kingdom, 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 kingdom. Can I tell you that that will not change? <laughs> we will continue to preach about kingdom because the kingdom of God is the focus of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. That was his, his primary statements focused on the kingdom is at hand. Now can I tell you something what the Lord just showed just a few moments ago? 
the, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We say that, right? Right. Yeah. And, and, it, and it probably means different things to different people. At different times, it can mean different things. But here's one of the things that <coughs> that the Lord showed me in regards to that phrase, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is available. Yes. 24-7. It's available to you. Now, here's the thing. We've got to get beyond the way we think about the kingdom. Amen. I hear so much language in the church today. It used to be that everything was focused on the, the church, but now the language has shifted. The language has shifted to everybody is talking about kingdom. We're going to build a kingdom, advance the kingdom, do this to the kingdom. But here's the problem in that whole language change is the practice hasn't changed. Yeah. It's exactly. only the language that has changed. Right. The understanding of the kingdom is still in the degree of the religious and the traditional Amen. instead of the reality of the kingdom. Right. I'll listen to people all the time talk about, and they use these words, the kingdom. Kingdom of God, Kingdom of Heaven. And they'll use them, but immediately when they begin to express themselves, you see they have no understanding of Kingdom. Mm -hmm. The Kingdom of God. The Kingdom of God is available. Available to you. Yes. Right? yes. Now, if you're looking for a religious experience, you've come to the wrong place. Okay. If you're looking for tradition, you come to the wrong place. Right. Now, a religious experience is, is just that. It, it's an experience that is, comes forth out of tradition and religion. And when it comes forth out of tradition and religion, religiously, you have to do it over and over again in order to be satisfied. Oh, okay. Okay. But God is not interested in religious experience. He's interested in relational experience. Okay? Relational experience. Hallelujah. I can come to my house every day. You know, just say this, I feel like the Lord dropped it in my heart. I can come to my house every day religiously. And I can, I can come there and I can do all the religious activities in my house every day and not ever have a relationship with anyone in the house. Wow. Mm -hmm. You see, God is not looking for me to have a religious relationship with the church or with the kingdom. He's looking for you to have a relationship. A relationship with the one true king Amen. and his Amen. people. Amen. It's a life-changing experience. Right. Amen. Amen. Religion will let you down. Sure. Can, 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 I, can I tell you this? Yeah. It's, it's like medicine. I don't know if I ever get into the word. It's, it, it's like medicine. Okay? Mm -hmm. Medicine. Or like drugs. Let's put in drugs. If, 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 if someone gives you drugs, it takes you to a certain level of a place of highness, okay? Mm -hmm. And your body reacts to that. Mm -hmm. Well, the next time, you have to have a little more. That's right. And a little more. Mm -hmm. And a little more. So that religious practice in that, in, in the, that medicine. Uh -huh. Builds up a tolerance. Okay. The same thing with a lot of times with activities in church. We go around and we start chasing demons. We start chasing this and we start right. chasing that and we start chasing the other. Guess what? That's a religious experience and it's, it's right. got to be multiplied yeah. and, and accelerated to the point where we, we and, and all of a sudden, guess what? It levels out and, and there's no more. And we say, well, what went wrong? Because you're chasing after the wrong thing. Right. It's the heart of the king that you're after. Right. You see? Okay. Amen. The heart of the king. Um, all right. The reason I say <laughs> that God wants to have a relationship with you is this first thing that you, you see in the garden. Okay. 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 First thing you see, God says, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. Right? 
and give him dominion over the earth. And then it says, after, after Adam and Eve sinned, it says that, he, that God came walking in the garden in the groove of day. Why did he come? Because God was in relationship with Adam, and he would say, Adam, where are you? That's right. Yeah. So what, what did Adam do? Adam, Adam had hidden himself. Hidden himself from the relationship that he was designed to have. And how many times are we right now? We, 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 we hide ourselves from the relationship wow. that God wants to have with us. Yeah. Good analogy. Wow. Yeah. And God said, no, I don't, I, I don't want you to have all these, these experiences and all this religion and all this tradition and all that kind of stuff trying to fill the void. He said, you were designed for a relationship with me. That's kingdom. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You were designed to, you were, oh, glory to God, you were designed to walk with God. Amen. Amen. This is powerful. This, this is powerful. <laughs> Luke chapter 10. Let's start with verse 1. And we'll see where it goes. <laughs> Luke chapter 10, verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, don't know that. I just feel like I'm going to need to touch on that for one second. One second, okay? Two by two. Two by two. Yeah. God never sends out solo acts. That's right. Yeah. There's solo acts. It's, it's two by two. It's always partnering. Two reasons. Two reasons, okay, he sends out two by two. One is that you have, you can bear witness. Right, right. And the other, well, actually, there's three reasons. One is you can bear witness, okay? The second one is pro protection. Yeah. Amen. You're protected in that in, in environment. And the, and the other one is you can encourage one another. Amen. Okay? So, anyway, two by two. No solo acts. I, I'm so tired of solo acts in the body of Christ. I'm going to say something and it might get me in trouble. It might get me in trouble. But I am so tired of big name ministries and big name churches Amen. and big name this and big name that and everything. And everything. The people who are doing things on their own. I am so tired of that. Amen. We are a part of the body of Christ in yes. the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. That's, that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> all right? Okay. All right, that's it. If I'm in trouble, I'm in trouble. Yep. Then he said to them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And go your way. Behold, I send you as lambs among wolves. That's an interesting little thing. Is I send you as lambs among wolves. That's right. You know? Did you know the lamb has no defense? That's right. Yeah. But a wolf is a devouring thing. He's saying you, you are defenseless, and I'm sending you out there among those wolves. Why? Because the Lord is my shepherd. Amen. 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 And see, that's the defense of the lamb is the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I'll be with you. I'll never leave you, not forsake you. Okay. Carry neither money bag, knapsack, nor sandals, and greet no one along the road. But whoever, well, whatever house you enter in, first say peace to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as they, care, they give, for the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not go from house to house. And whatever city you enter into, the in, enter, and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. And he will sit there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near you. Okay? That, and that's why I want to bring that to that place. The Lord Jesus told these 70 to go out two by two to take the message of the kingdom of God and he says, and those who receive you, 
Now, what are they receiving? Jesus. The message of the kingdom. Okay. Okay. Yes. okay. The, the, the message. Okay. So what's happening here is it's got a receiving. You hear you the word receive, right? Yeah. If we as a people do not receive the message, if we don't receive the message, you know what God says? He says, I'm going to the next place. That's right. All right. He said, I'm going to the next place. If you, if, you, if you will not receive what I have for you, I'm going to the next place. Watch it. First time. But whatever city you enter and they do not receive you, go out into the streets and say, the very dust of your city which clings to us, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this. Know this, that the kingdom of God has come near you. Wow. That the kingdom of God was made available to you, right. but you chose to not walk in it. that message. You, you rejected it. You didn't receive it. Okay? You didn't receive it. <laughs> I'm not talking about getting saved and going to heaven. I'm talking about the message of the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. And this message brings liberty. It brings freedom. It brings healing. It brings prosperity. It brings everything that we need. Can I tell you this right now? Love and compassion. This book right here. This book. Right here. Contains the answer to every problem Amen. that man will ever Amen. face. That's right. Amen. This book right here. This book not only contains the, the, the answer to men's problems, but it also instructs us on how to go to the author of it so that we can understand every situation that we're in and come out of it victorious. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, the, God, God show, has shown me that, that everything that you ever need for any situation in your life, He already has the answer. Amen. Already has the answer. But, but, but you, Michael Hughes, put your name in there, you have to receive what I am bringing Amen. to you Amen. in order for it to produce yes. in your life. Yes. If you don't receive it, I'm going to go on and find somebody that will receive it. Faith without works is dead. Hallelujah. God is looking for a people who will say yes to his provision. Absolutely. Wow. He has provided everything in life that we'll ever need. Now, I know that's hard to wrap our heads around. It's really hard. But God has provided everything that you will ever need for Absolutely. every situation Amen. in yes. life. Yes. Yes. Amen. Holy Spirit, show me where to go. Show me where to go. Hallelujah. No, no, that's okay. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 14. First. Proverbs 14. I believe that's where I'm at. <coughs> I, I, I think I'm, I'm on the cow all over the place right now. a way that seems right to a man, mm -hmm. but its end is the way of death. Wow. Wow. There is a way that seems right 
to a man. But its end is death. Its end is destruction. Its end is... Now remember when Jesus came and John is talking about Jesus coming and he says that the light has come into the world. The light has come into the world or it has come into the darkness but the darkness could not comprehend it or could not understand it. Light has come. Light is understanding. Jesus has brought to us the wisdom of heaven. When he said, the kingdom of heaven is available to you, he says, I am bringing to you all the wisdom that you will ever need to live life to its fullest. Okay? But, but, but the ways of a man, what did he say in Proverbs chapter 14 right there? He said, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its way is the way of death. Now, now go back to what Jesus' first words were. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is what? At hand. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is available to you. Repent. The man thinks in a certain way. A man has his pattern of thinking. He has his plans of thinking. He has his way of processing everything. But those ways lead to death. But Jesus says, change the way you think and it will lead to life. Amen? Amen? That's kingdom thinking. He's saying, I, he said, I'm bringing you the wisdom. I'm bringing you everything you need for life, but you keep wanting to think the old way. Wow. That brings you to death. And that brings you to death. That's exactly right. How many of you know that Jesus came to free us from the law of sin and death? Amen. Right. Amen. Now, did you hear the one thing? He came to free you from the law of sin and death. Right. Now, we, we've been religiously taught, and it's correct in some ways, and we've been religiously taught that I, I sin, therefore I'm going to die, and I'm going to go to hell. And that's kind of where it's been taught. And we say, if you accept Jesus Christ, you'll get life, and you'll go to heaven. And that's been the gospel. But it's much more than that. Yes, that's right. Jesus is telling us that he has, he, he says in, in the word that we have been freed from the curse of sin and death. Now let me explain to you the curse of sin and death, how it is. The simplicity, simplicity of that curse. Adam was created in perfection. Yes. There was not one thing that Adam ever needed as long as he walked in that relationship with the Creator. Right. That's right. And when he walked in that relationship with the Creator, it was a beautiful and wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. It all came together in harmony. Okay? But when he, Adam and Eve, listened to the voice of another what ended up happening is they sinned. Okay? They sinned because they missed the mark from which they were created to live in. You hear what I'm saying? Yes. Hopefully you hear what I'm saying? Absolutely. It was created, man was created to live in a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the king so that from out of that instruction with the king, as we walk with him, life flowed. But as soon as Eve and Adam listened to the voice of another, things changed. And they came under the curse of yes. the law of sin and death. So now, listen, 
as they were moving throughout the rest of their life, mm -hmm. they were doing what? Looking at things not from the king's perspective and not from the kingdom perspective, but from the other voice. Other voice. Yes. They were hearing other things. They were listening to other things. They were doing things in a way which was not kingdom. Amen. Right. And so therefore they were doing what? Sinning. They were missing the mark. Now in order for us to, listen, <laughs> we were freed from the curse of sin and death. We were freed from we have been freed from that listening to the voice of another to listening to the Spirit Amen. of God, which brings life. Amen. Amen. Right. You, got, you, you understand where I'm coming yes. from with this? Yes. Amen. yes, absolutely. So in order to not walk under the curse of sin and death, and to walk in the spirit of life, we have to listen to the author of life. That's right, 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 right. And what he has to say. That's right. Amen. Follow the word of God. But, we, but we've got this thing that we end up doing is that when God tells us something, we go and we do it our way. And when we do it our way, it ends up getting the results yes. Yes. that we're not looking for. And then we cry out to God and we say, God, why is it not working? Well, you didn't receive what I gave you, so therefore you didn't receive it. I'm going over here now. Okay? In order for it to work in your life, you've got to receive it. Oh boy. <laughs> Amen. Preach it. Preach it. <clears throat> you will never ever walk into anything in the, into the fullness and the blessings of God until you receive the instruction of God. Amen. Amen. And you will never walk in the blessings of God until you apply the Amen. instructions of God. Yeah. Watch this. Oh, there's so many places I want to go with. <laughs> And, and You're doing a good job. Keep going. John, go go with me to John chapter. Uh, John chapter fifteen. <clears throat> I believe that's where we're going to go. Mm. Holy Spirit, tell me. Let's go back up to John chapter 14 for just a moment. Yeah. And we're going to go to verse 12. Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. Amen. Yeah. Watch this. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son, if you ask anything in my name. Right? Let's go back to chapter 15. Verse, oh gosh, I hope chapter is so beautiful. Yeah. But we'll start at verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. Okay? If you abide in me and my words abide in you, what, what, what's abiding? In us? The word. The His word. words. The word. So, it means we received his word, Amen. and his word is in us. Amen. Now his word is going to produce fruit. Okay. Okay. And he will be glorified. He will be glorified. Exactly. Why? Because you know 
that he gave you the instruction and you carried out his instruction and you did it in a totally opposite way right. of the world, right. did it in a totally opposite way of that which you used to understand, right. and it brings glory to God because Amen. his ways are higher than our ways. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He God, I'm going to tell you a secret of the kingdom of heaven. What is that? God knows more than we do. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> there is nothing that God is hiding from us. No. Remember? Nothing. God just didn't desire to hire you or hide anything from him. <clears throat> Listening to a man the other day, and this is part of what has changed my way of thinking on this. I was listening to a man who God was showing him a process of gardening. Well, the, 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 the video that I was watching is called Back to Eden. Uh -huh. Well, as many of you know, I've got a title in my heart that's been in there for years of a book called Return to Eden. <laughs> so it caught my attention, Back to Eden. Okay? And he said he was struggling with farming. He was struggling getting his crops to grow, dealing with hard soil, dealing with lack of water, dealing with, with uh, um, all kinds of things that farmers deal with. And so he asked the Lord about it. And the Lord told him, he said, he said, the answer is just right around you. Look around you. Well, his surrounding his place is nothing but a forest. And his garden here is struggling to grow. Mm -hmm. Can't get enough water to it. Can't get enough uh, of, of anything that it needs to it. But the forest around is just growing up. Right. Because man, in his ideas, had not yet set foot in the forest and ruined it. Absolutely. So he began to take the principles that he saw in the forest and apply them to his gardening. And people, I'm telling you, you wouldn't believe the beautiful fruit that came forth out of the garden. <coughs> now here's the thing. At first he didn't just do it and it happened. He saw it. But then he went back and he tried to apply his methods <laughs> along with those methods, and it didn't work. Right, right. He tried to do it his, his understanding mm -hmm. along with God's understanding, and it didn't work. That's right. Why are you talking about me right now? And so he comes <laughs> back, comes back, and he uh, he examines it again, and he says, "Oh, well." And then he says, "God, how come it's not working?" And uh, why didn't you show me that? And here's what the Lord spoke to him. You didn't ask. Oh, you didn't ask? You didn't ask. Okay? Oh, that hit, oh, that hit some hearts, didn't it? Yeah. How many yeah, yeah, times yeah. have we gone through things and we have not, we've chosen to do it our oh, way, way, which ends in death, mm -hmm. but instead of God's way, which ends in life, and we, and we say, God, oh, why is it working? Because you didn't ask me how to do it. Oh my God, is that true? That's right. <laughs> Listen to it. You didn't ask. Now, Jesus says this. He says, ask, and you shall receive. You shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened. Okay? Now, those are three steps. Okay? Ask and you shall receive. Okay? Right. It has been made available to you. Right. This is what God is saying. He showed me this one on the way to church this morning. He said, when you ask, it's been made available to you right there. Right. So anything you ask for, to know, to understand, it's, it's available to you, Bob, right now. Okay? Amen. But then he said, there's another place that you got to go. you got to seek it. Because you you have your old understanding of things. Now you've got to seek out what I'm telling you. Seek. Seek means what? To look for it. To look for it with our eyes. 
and to listen for it with our ears. We want to what? Oh, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Look for it. Look for kingdom way. Look for God's way. Look for the king's way to do it. Well, see, God created our whole ecosystem in a way that it would, if we will follow his principles, it'll flourish. Did you know that God created all of life in that same way? That if we will listen to what he has said, our lives will flourish. But it's listening to God. Asking Him. How do I go through this? Because we were built in the beginning, what? To have relationship with Him. To walk in the garden. To hear what He had to say. You think, well, Adam was just, Adam was having a conversation and God was sharing principles with him. Amen. And so he was walking with God. He was asking Him. He was receiving those instructions. And then as he received those instructions, things began to take off and go. Ask, receive, knock. Oh, glory to God. Guess what knock is? This is the part we really don't like. We really kind of don't like. We, 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 do, we, we do the asking. And we say, okay, I'm going to ask you, God, but I really don't want your answer. I'm going to still do it my way. I want to continue to do it my way, but I want you to fix it, Lord. That's really what we're saying. I'm going I'm to go my way, but you fix it, Lord. I ask you to fix it. But God says, no, I'm, I'm, you're asking and I'm giving you the solution to how to fix it. Now, you've got to seek for that solution. And once you find that solution, you've heard me, you've seen me, now I want you to apply it. Amen. I want you to apply what I just told you. And when you apply that which I just told you, guess what? The manifestation of the kingdom of God will begin to work. Right. In our lives. Amen. I hope you hear what I'm saying here. Oh, I hear it loud and clear. Hallelujah. We have been, we've been doing the Proverbs 14 thing. We've been going about our own way. Yep. Go following our own plans. Getting our own results. But we need to get the results of God. The kingdom results. Yeah. And that takes us listening to him. I, I think I got time to continue this. Yeah. Hallelujah. How many of you remember last week I talked about a man by the name of Saul? Oh, and David. Saul and David. Saul and David. And Saul, and these are some beautiful examples. Saul did things his way. David did things God's way. Saul was a, was a man who was after his own understanding. David was a man after God's understanding. David never did everything right immediately. But when he found out that what he was doing wrong was wrong, he changed it. He repented of it. He changed it and he walked in the right way. Mm -hmm. that's, what he, that's what it means when he's after God's own heart. He's trying to find out how does God do things? That's right. What is God doing here? What's the king doing here? But, but Saul was all about him, self, and about what the people thought. That's right. Oh, Lord. I'm going to say it. Go ahead, Father. If you want to be successful in the kingdom of God and live a successful kingdom life, you're going to have to make a decision that you're not interested in what other people think. Amen. 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 Can I tell you that sometimes can be the so, decision? Yeah, you can say that. So, but let me go and preach. All right. <laughs> um, don't worry about what somebody else thinks. Because if you start worrying about what someone else thinks, it's going to take you off of the course that God has you on. That's right. Okay? Amen. God's for your success, brother. God wants you to succeed. God never wants you to fail. God has always wanted you to succeed. He's always wanted man to succeed. He'll never want man to fail. Not whatsoever. None whatsoever. That's right. Matter of fact, he tells us in the book of Proverbs, he says, well, he says, seek wisdom. Mm -hmm. 
You seek wisdom. And when you seek wisdom, he said, that's, that, that's the principal thing you want to get. Well, where does wisdom come from? It comes from God and God only. Wisdom. Well, here, here's another thing, what he says about wisdom. But we can go on and we can talk about Solomon. You know how Solomon, when he, when he was the appointed king and God came and he asked him, he said, Solomon, what do you want? And Solomon could have asked for anything in the world, but what does Solomon yeah. ask for? Wisdom to guide and govern your people. And God says, I like that. Amen, man. And he says, I'll give that to you. And he gave it to him and it says that there's never been one wiser uh, before Solomon or after Solomon. Now that does not, you know, God himself calls obviously his wiser. He's someone yeah. giving you wisdom. But here's what the Lord has a promise to you. It says in James chapter 1, verse 5, If any man lack wisdom, let him ask. Right. And he'll say, he'll get it to you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But let him not doubt in his heart. So that when God begins to give you the instruction, the wisdom, you got to begin to walk in that and not doubt about it. Because His ways are higher than our ways. Amen? Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Amen. when we start doing it God's way, we're going to start getting God's results. Yes. I hope you hear it. Saul and David, back to Saul and David. David was a man after God's own heart. He wanted to do things God's way. Saul wanted to do things his way and the way of people. Okay? Saul's way led to death. David's way led yeah, to so. life. Because yeah. David's way was God's way. <coughs> let's, let's turn there. First Samuel. We're not going to go much further because I think we're, we're, we're going to we dig ourselves down into not understanding um, what the Lord is saying if we get First Samuel. Thank you. Verse uh, chapter. Let's see. Chapter fifteen. Okay. Oh, wow, this is this is amazing. I hope I can find all of this. What Well. sacrifices as in observing what the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. Mm. Wow. wow. And to heed the fat than, than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry now watch this, you've got to put it all together. Wow. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. Uh, what, what was Saul doing? Not listening to the voice of God. Doing it his way. God told, says through the prophet Samuel here, he says, you're being rebellious. And you're being stubborn. Because you won't listen to the voice of God. You're being rejected, right? He's not moving on to another, remember? Right. What does he do? At this point in time, he moves on to David. That's right. right. Because David would receive the Word of God, where Amen. Saul would not receive the right. Word of God. Amen. All right? Which one are we going to be? Are we going to be a Saul? Are we going to be rebellious? Are we going to be stubborn? You know, Jesus talks about a stubborn and a stiff-necked people, doesn't he? Right. Yes. I mean, have you ever seen a stubborn, stiff-necked individual? You cannot move them. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Can't move them. No matter what you do, they're just stubborn. That's stiff neck. They're not going to hear a word you're saying. They're not going to go to it. Okay? Go to um, Isaiah chapter 30, please. Isaiah chapter 30. Try to wrap this up. We're going to 
go to verse 1 of Isaiah 30. <clears throat> Woe to the rebellious children, says the Lord, who take counsel, but not of me, who devise plans, but not of my spirit, mm. that they may add sin to sin, that they may be, keep on missing yeah. the mark. Yeah. Mm. Who walk to go down to Egypt, Egypt represents the world, mm -hmm. and have not asked my advice to strengthen themselves in the strength of, uh, to Pharaoh, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore the strength of Pharaoh shall be your shame, and the trust in the shadow of Egypt shall be your humiliation. Did you hear what God is saying? He said, because you chose not to seek my advice, because you chose to continually seek the advice of the world, right. I'm going to leave you to it. And it's going to be your shame. Now, wait, wait a second. Those must be people that are not saved, right? No, 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 no. He says, woe to the children, to the rebellious children. How many times are we rebelling against the Lord every day because we will not listen to His voice? We are a stiff-necked, rebellious, stubborn people who want to do it our way.
she, Jesus probably looked at him and said, are you crazy? I'm going to give up this for that. <laughs> but then he says, the, 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 the next place is that soil where it's fertile. The ground is prepared. And the seed of the kingdom, the word of the kingdom comes in. And it begins to produce in our lives. As it begins to produce the fruit. And what did we say fruit would do? Glorify God. So if you want to glorify God in your life, and you want to live this simple, simplistic, beautiful life, trust in the Lord. Amen. Oh, Amen. Let's, add, let's finish it with this. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon you. And learn of who? Of me. Of me. And so we say, he said, learn my way of doing it. Because if you learn my way, my way is what? Light. My way is easy. And so he says, he said, if you'll just learn my way. That's right. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I'm going to say it in this way. Lord, please don't go down the highway. We receive it right here. Your way. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. We want it to happen in our lives yes. today. Amen. Right here. Yes. Amen. Now, by the power and the strength of the Holy Spirit, you're able to do this. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. You cannot do it by, by the power of the flesh. You cannot do it. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, for greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Right. Because of the Holy Spirit, you can walk into the promises of God and accomplish everything God has Amen. for your life. Amen. Amen. You can do it. Amen. You can do it. Amen. 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 Father, I pray that today this message, oh Lord, that you put in my heart, I pray, oh God, that it will come, oh God, to produce great fruit. This word, this seed that comes into our heart, that it will begin to produce the fruit that will glorify your name. Yeah. Now Lord as the enemy comes against my brothers and sisters because they've heard this word because they want to receive this word as the enemy comes against them Lord God to try to snatch it away to try to take it away in any way that he can I pray your protection upon them I pray that, Lord, that he will not be successful, but, Lord, that they will not listen to his voice, but will listen to your voice and yeah. accomplish everything in their life that you have called them to accomplish. And I give you praise for that. May to God, to God, to God be the glory yes. for Amen. things he has done. Amen? Amen. 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 God bless you, every one of you today. God bless Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. Thank you, for, thank you for letting me share with you what God put in my heart. Okay? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. In Jesus' name.